Good morning, folks. We've got a couple excellent science updates, one on peculiar activity at the closest magnetar to our solar system, the other on triggering the megathrust quake at Cascadia. Of course, we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where the calm continues. We've been noting that all the big sunspot activity is on the far side of the sun and that continues here with low flaring output and minimal eruptive activity. We do have a large number of plasma filaments on the disk, but they have remained very stable. You can see them even better here in the red 304 angstrom view of ionized helium. They have maintained their positions in the corona quite well, but of course they can erupt in only a matter of minutes. We'll be watching those today while we await the return of major active regions. Speaking of which, those big ones are indeed still alive on the far side. This graphic from SDO shows the helioseismology returns in magnetogram. The gray areas are what is facing the Earth, but the yellow portion in the middle here is what the dynamics of the sun tells us is on the other side facing away from Earth. The dark patches are significant active region sunspots and potential eruptive activity, and those black patches should begin to be visible coming around the limb by the weekend. First up in the articles today is an interesting note about the closest magnetar. They say that its activity is unusual to say the least. In fact, it's unexpected and totally unprecedented from a magnetar. These powerfully magnetic stars always have interesting output, but circularly polarized light is not among them, at least until now. They know that the light must be traveling through incredibly magnetized plasma, but such plasmas aren't usually found above the polar region of a magnetar. They are baffled and investigating further, but please also don't forget that magnetars are thought to do one of the scarier things in the universe. They can have a downward arc from energy in their magnetic fields that cracks the surface of the star. This is not only possible at any magnetic system that takes in too much energy, but it is likely what the ancients drawing the squatter man all over the world saw the last time the Earth took such an energetic blast from our sun. Top story today hits Cascadia the terrifying fault system off the coast of the northwest United States. New research shows that the well-known mechanism of earthquakes triggering other nearby earthquakes applies here and could be what finally sets off the magnitude 9 earthquake there. Not to mention, the various volcanic points in the region would be activated as well. They say that the Mendocino Triple Junction near Northern California could easily destabilize the Juan de Fuca and other critical faults in the Cascadia zone. It at last happened over 300 years ago, and it will occur again. Now they know there are many ways to open that door. We are six days away from the observer lunch in Colorado Springs, Tuesday, April 16th. Come meet other observers and we'll be discussing all things in our purview. Rocky is also expected to be there with the Big Burb. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.